Now that you've learned the process of taking a system description and turning it into an ER diagram, we've just done that on paper, and it's important to use other tools to create a more uh, graphic image that we could put into other documents, share on computer networks and such. So we need a tool that can give us an electronic ER diagram. There's lots of tools that can do this. You could uh, hack something together in PowerPoint. There are very complex tools called uh, or like ER Studio, which can even generate some SQL code for you from your ER diagrams. Uh, but one that I think is easy to use is is called Lucid Chart, and that's what we'll be using for this class. Microsoft Visio is another option. And so uh, Lucid Chart though has some great built-in templates that we can take advantage of. And this is still part of the conceptual database design process. In this process we'll be going over in this video, we are not creating uh, a database. That is, we're still not physically creating a database. We are conceptually creating a database. So from Lucidchart, after you have created your account and logged in, uh, you might not have any, um, uh, any documents here, and that's okay. If you click on the New Document drop-down button, that will bring up a list of templates of different image types you can create. And so uh, you're going to see things in here like flowcharts and swim lane diagrams and org charts, uh, things like that, but uh, what we'll be using for this class is Entity Relationship, and if you want to see an example of a completed one, you can open up this hockey ER diagram, but we'll just be starting from scratch with a blank ER diagram. So this will launch a new document. All of this is web browser based, doesn't require the installation of any separate um, uh, computer uh, software. And uh, we have a number of different uh, image assets on the left that we can take advantage of. The only ones we'll be using are in this, this entity relationship area here and uh, just standard. In fact, we'll use standard uh, at the top of our documents to specify your name and uh, the title of this. And so uh, if I drag in, say, this capital T, you'll see that this brings a text field. When I release my mouse, um, I can edit the text inside of here. So maybe we'll call this um, buyer agent house ER diagram. And I'll also include my name and our course information. And any of these things can be resized with resizing handles that you're familiar with in, in almost any other application. So this is just kind of a title at the top. And I can do things like bold it um, and change the color. All of these toolbar items up here, um, you can uh, play around with those and, and, and see what they do. We can change the alignment of things. I like that center alignment for the, for the top, so that's good. So now let's start building this. We're going to build the ER diagram that you created for homework four. Uh, with the buyers, agents, and houses. And there are four different entities that we can drag in here, um, and they have a different level of complexity. I like using the one on the far right, which is the most complex, because it allows us to specify not only the entity title, but also for each attribute in the entity, uh, whether or not it's a key field, um, the name of the field, and then finally the data type in our instance it'll be the Oracle SQL data type. So I'm going to drag one of these over into my diagram and uh, everything in here can be edited. Let's start by editing the name of this entity. I'm going to call this entity buyer. And uh, also I need to make this a little larger so I'm just going to drag this out and I'm going to specify when I select an entity and click on this cog on the right here I can change the number of fields. This um, entity is actually going to have four fields. You can see what that does as I change these these numbers. So if you need to have an entity with, with six fields, um, you can just do that with, with these arrows. And we can shade the header, header that looks kind of nice. And uh, we're done editing those properties. So now let's add some of the values. So my first attribute in this table is going to be a primary key. That's going to be the buyer ID and the data type is going to be a character field uh, with length 10. My next field won't have any key. It's for first name. 
and this is a variable length character field of length 30. And we're using our naming conventions because the idea is this is, when we complete this, this is a tool that can be used for our physical database design. When we actually go in and write some create table queries, we have all the data that we need and you know we don't have a space in here, we're not using underscores, we're adhering to our naming conventions and that's important. Our next field, uh, and by the way I'm just double clicking on these to edit them, and uh, this is also a varchar field like 30 and now we need a foreign key in here for agent ID that's how we're going to link these two tables or create the relationship between these two tables agent ID is a character field of length 10 so we have one entity in here and that's looking pretty good let's uh, let's drag out another one so this one's gonna go on the top right here and there's these nice guidelines so I can uh, keep my tops of the um, of these entities together so I can use those grid lines to make it look clean and this entity is going to be for agent so let's be consistent here and shade my header rows this is actually going to have three fields so I don't need to change anything there my first field is going to be a primary key field and that's for agent ID and the type of this is char 10 and I need to make this wider. Things are not fitting, and so I'm going to click this bottom right here. I'm not clicking any of these circles over here. These circles are going to be used when I need to create lines and relationships between my entities. But if I go down here where I see this blue square, that will allow me to change my, uh, my width. I can also change the uh, width of each individual column by clicking on these uh, boxes on the top. Next field I need is not a key field. It's for first name. We use a varchar field of length 30. And this isn't fitting, so let's tweak these a bit. That looks better. And a last name field. Same data type. The last entity we're going to add, I'm going to add it down here. And that's going to be for house. The house is going to have uh, seven fields on it and we will shade the header so I can close those properties again if I need to access those properties in the future I click the cog so let's um, make this wider drag this into place that'll look good there our first field would be a primary key field for listing ID and this is of type char with a length of 10 now I'm using the tab key uh, I can navigate between these fields using tab to move forward or shift tab to move backwards if you don't want to double click on each one of these. So we just have a single address field that could contain the house number and the street and the city, uh, state, and zip. So I created a long varchar field for that. Asking price is going to be currency, and so I'll use the number field for that. 11 characters total, two after the decimal place. My last two fields here will be foreign keys that are going to link the house table to the buyer table and the agent table. and I want to match this data type with buyer ID over here in the buyer table. Same thing with agent ID, that's also a char 10. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here, but now we need to specify the relationships between these entities, and that's where we're finally going to use these uh, circles that appear on the sides and on the top and the bottom. And so this is a matter of personal preference uh, you know, agent ID and buyer is related to agent ID and house. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to uh, link between this particular field and this particular field. You can just create a generic listing or a generic uh, um, 
relationship between these two, and so I'm just going to use this generic bottom one. And if I click and drag, and then go to where I want to connect this to and let go, I've now created a relationship. And so thankfully enough, by default, this is the cardinality we want. We want the buyer side of this relationship to be the one side, and the many side of this relationship to be the house side. So one uh, buyer um, can buy many houses. That's this relationship here. And so uh, let's first put in our verbs, and then uh, I'll talk more about how we can change that those cardinality icons. So I'm going to double click on this square here and that'll bring up a text box. So I can put my um, verbs in here. Purchase and purchase by. And to do a carriage return inside of one of these text boxes you can use shift enter. Shift Enter will move my cursor down to a new field. So now we have this nice verb sitting in here. And uh, say I had, I had done this relationship wrong. With this relationship selected, I have all of these uh, tools up here in my toolbar. So if that relationship needs to be reversed, I can click this button and watch the many side change. So as I click that, the many side of my relationship and the one side of my relationship are swapped. And if, uh, say, this was a one-to-one -one relationship, I could go over here to the many side of my relationship and change that to a one relationship. So now I have a one-to-one -one relationship depicted in this line. That's not what I want, so I'm going to change that back to the many relationship. And that's looking good. So let's add two more relationships. Let's add one between buyer and agent. And so if I click and drag here to here, Here's my relationship. Now this relationship did not come in the way I wanted it to. I want uh, one agent um, can work with many buyers. And right now this is saying that one buyer works with many agents. So I can uh, reverse the direction of that relationship. So now this makes sense. I'll double click here on this blue square and add in my verbs, which will be represents and represented by. And then the last relationship will be between agent and house. So I'm clicking and dragging. And this is the cardinality I want. I want one agent lists many houses. Many houses are listed by one agent. So now let's add in our verbs here. Lists, agent lists house. And a house is listed by an agent. So there we have it. Those are all the steps we need to create an ER diagram. And for doing things like uh, assignments and the like, let me scroll this down a bit so you can see my menu at the top here. Exporting is really easy in Lucidchart. So if I go to File, Download As, I can choose any one of these options. For your assignments, you'll be uh, downloading it as a PDF and uploading the, that as a PDF. If this was going into a document, say your end of semester um, group project, maybe you want to download this as a JPEG and that JPEG will go into a Microsoft Word document uh, as an image inside of your Word document. So once you select this and click download, uh, you'll see uh, on the bottom left of your browser, just like any other download from a browser, you'll, you'll see a file listed there that you can submit. So that is the process of creating an ER diagram in uh, Lucidchart. I forgot I should show you how to save this. So if you click File, Save As, uh, I'll call this one um, YouTube ER Diagram Lucid Chart Demo. Click OK. And then if I go back to my documents, you can see um, here's the most recent ER diagram that I added. And later on, I can open this and do some further editing in it if I'd like.